Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I am here to help you better understand everything that you just learned in class, whether it was my class or whether it was somebody else's class. Okay, so let's just jump right into the periodic table. That's why you're here, right? To learn everything that you need to know about the periodic table. So by the end of this video, you're gonna know all the special groups, all the parts of the periodic table, some little special things that the periodic table will tell us. Make sure and grab your periodic table. And if you do not already have the things marked on your periodic table that I'm about to mark, you need to add those things to your periodic table. Let's just jump right in. The periodic table is made up of vertical rows called groups. These go up and down and there are 18 of them. The horizontal rows are called periods. Now I always keep these two words straight because sentences run horizontally on your paper and sentences often have periods after it. Now, I know that's this different kind of period. It always helps me to remember the difference between periods and groups. Let's notice there are seven periods. Now, the periodic table is broken into three big general groups. Most of the periodic table is made of metals. All this area here, kind of cut up the diagonal, all this, metals. There's a little stair step right here. Those are called the metalloids. We have this kind of triangular piece up here. These are the non-metals. Let's look at each of their properties. Metals are malleable. Malleable means that you can change its shape. So if you hit it with a hammer, it's just gonna dent. It's not going to shatter. They're good conductors. Now they're good conductors of heat and electricity. They're lustrous. Lustrous is a fancy word for shiny. And they also react with acids. I'm gonna skip metalloids for right now. We're gonna come back to that in just a minute, I promise. So let's skip to non-metals. Let's look at that word, non-metals. It's like the opposite of metals. And that's exactly what it is. And all of their properties, exactly the opposite of metals. They're brittle. That means if you hit it with a hammer, it's gonna shatter into a million pieces. They're poor conductors. They're poor conductors of heat and electricity. They're dull, not shiny, and they do not react with acid. I always say you really only have to memorize one of these properties because the other one's the complete opposite. The periodic table has several family groups that have special names. Group one is called the alkali metals. The alkali metals, since they're group one, have one valence electron. They are very reactive. In fact, they're so reactive that if they touch water, they explode. They're soft. You can cut them with a butter knife. They're so soft. They're not very dense and they're silvery. The second group of the periodic table is called the alkaline earth metals. All of these metals are found in the earth. Did you realize calcium was a metal? So the alkaline earth metals, since they're in group two, they have two valence electrons. They're somewhat reactive compared to the alkali metals. They react to water, but not so violently. They definitely don't explode. They're, so they're still pretty reactive. They're silvery white in color, but they're also malleable. This third special family of the periodic table takes into account more than just one group. From three through 12, I call these the short groups, but really these are called the transition metals. The transition metals are malleable. They're good conductors. They are hard. They have high densities. They have high melting points and boiling points and they have a variable oxidation state. Variable oxidation state, that's the whole reason why they're called the transition metals. If we remember back to when we talked about valence electrons and how to look at the periodic table to tell about valence electrons, we only talked about these main groups. We didn't include the transition metals, and it's because they don't follow a trend for valence electrons because they have a variable oxidative state. They transition between oxidation states. They also form colored ions and compounds. So if you see a pretty colored solution in chemistry class, it's probably got a transition metal in it. So this next group, the purple one, we call these the poor metals. They're still metals, but they're not as good at being metals as the transition metals in the alkali and alkaline earth. So the poor metals, they're not quite as good conductors. They can still conduct, just not so good. And they have lower melting and boiling points. Now here we are back to that stair step metalloids. So metalloids have properties of both. That's why they're called metalloids. They're kind of like metals. They're kind of like non-metals. They're shiny, 
but they're brittle. And we also call them semiconductors because they can kind of conduct. Sometimes they just need to be under special conditions to be good conductors. And then we've got group 17. These are called the halogens. Halogens, since they're group 17, have seven valence electrons, and they are very reactive. Very reactive. In fact, they're the most reactive non-metal group. Alkali metal, most reactive metal group. Halogens, most reactive non-metal groups. They get the word halogen because when you make a compound with them, they form a salt. We normally think of salt as the stuff we put on our food, and that is a salt, and it is formed from a halogen. But salt is a more general term. Salt can be any compound with a halogen involved in it. And then we have group 18, the noble gases. The noble gases are inert. That just means non-reactive. They have eight valence electrons because they're in group 18. They're also odorless, colorless. They glow bright when electricity is passed through them. Think of like a neon sign. Most of the time when we see different colored neon signs, we all call them neon signs because that's what we think they are. But neon signs is specific to the neon gas that's in the tube that's running the electricity through. When you see different colors, that's different noble gases. And then I've added this last pink group right here. We can call these the chomps. Chomps, because we got C, H, O, N, P, S. Now the only reason why I call our attention to the chomps is because these are all of life's molecules. All of the macro molecules you learn about in biology Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur. These elements are where all of the molecules of life come from. Let's add one more thing to our periodic table. I know it's got lots of stuff on it right now, but let's add one more. Diatomic molecules. Let's talk about that word diatomic. The prefix di means two. Atomic, that's atoms. Two atoms that are hanging out together all the time. There are seven diatomic molecules on the periodic table, and that just means those elements are never found alone in nature. They are always found in groups of two. Let's look at the periodic table and mark those, and you're going to want to memorize those. And the nice thing about this little trend is they make a seven on the periodic table, except for hydrogen over here. Remember hydrogen's over here? Looks like it's with the alkali metals, but it's not. It's not an alkali metal because it's not a metal. Hydrogen is a diatomic gas. And then the rest of them, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they make a seven on the periodic table. So there are seven total diatomic molecules and they make a seven. You have to know these because anytime I say nitrogen gas, you need to know that's N2. Make sure and mark these on your periodic table. Is your periodic table as colorful as mine is now? I hope so. It's the best way to learn all the properties of the periodic table. So now you know everything you need to know about the periodic table. You can tell the difference between a group and a period, a metal, a metalloid, a non-metal, all those special family groups. If you found this helpful, don't forget all the other tutorials I have. Look in my description. I've got easy links for you. Also, if you've got a friend that's struggling, go ahead and share this with them. All right, well, until next time, bye, y'all.